You're listening to Sacks in the Basement, a production of the Broadcast Basement Limited, where every show is 30 minutes of good and comes from a basement bar on the south side of Chicago. Pull up a stool, pour a cold one, and join us right now for Sacks in the Basement. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found and always at SacksInTheBasement.com. Bellying up to the nine foot homemade oak bar. Pour yourself a cold one. My name is Chris. His name is Ed. We have 30 minutes of socks for fans, by fans. We have so much to talk about as the trade deadline has come and gone. And there are a lot of changes to your white socks. And it's very positive. And it's it's really interesting. And it's a little heartbreaking in a lot of ways. And I've got a lot of feelings that I need to express in the next 30 minutes. And Ed and you guys are going to have to to put up with it because at least in the first five minutes here I might cry but we're going to get through it because there's that overall what an incredible trade deadline by Rick Hahn and company it's all brought to you by family waterproofing solutions give them a call 24 hours a day 708-330-4466 for all of your needs when it comes to getting water to leave your house or not come into your house in the first place check it all out at familydry.com all right my initial tweet. You were you were not um, you were not happy with an initial tweet here. I noticed I kind of backed off. I was going to start in with you, and I'm like, nah. I'll just wait until you and I have a chance to to, to talk our feelings out. I'm not going to delete it. I don't agree with my initial tweet anymore. But I feel like when you tweet something and then you delete it, you look like just a, a tool for not owning what you felt like. And when I sent it out, I felt that way. I thought the move was terrible. I was upset that Nick Madrigal was no longer a member of the White Sox. I personally believe that Nick Madrigal is going to have a magical postseason moment for someone in his career because he's the kind of guy that is going to come up in a big situation when he needs to make contact, and he's going to make contact. I think he's going to have some walk-off hits that you're going to watch uh, for years to come, and it's going to happen in the town that I live in, just on the north side. I think the Cubs got an all-star second baseman. I think he will go to an all-star game at least a few times in his career. There are people who don't agree with that, but I believe that about Nick Madrigal. I believe it so much that I I developed him in my minor league system on my fantasy baseball team, and he's my starting everyday second baseman when he's healthy. I believe in a Nick Madrigal, and I felt sick to my stomach when I saw the return because I was all excited about Craig Kimbrell coming to the White Sox. And then I saw Madrigal, and it was Bob Nightingale that put it out, and right away I was like, he's been wrong about so many things so many times in his life. I hope he's wrong about this. Everybody did the same thing. They all looked at him and said, well, Nightingale's saying it, so it's obviously not true. Can't be true. And, it- and, and and I was sitting there, I was like, no, that doesn't make a lick of sense. And that was my initial response uh, with, with uh, two family members of mine that are actually in our fantasy baseball league, and, and we text back and forth about everything White Sox. And initially they're like, they, they can't be, I'm like, they can't be right. But, you know, I, and I wrote this on Mismatched Socks as I was live blogging the deadline. And, and I took my time with the Kimbrel trade because I was conflicted as you were. My first thought was that Rick Hahn and the staff looked at Madrigal, looked at his medicals, and went, he will come back, he will play, but this injury will sap him of something that makes him special in terms of his speed, in terms of maybe some of his ability to hit. Because he needs his legs, he needs that good sturdy base. They're worried about him. It's kind of a Mike Soratka situation all over again. Remember, they traded him to the Blue Jays, and his shoulder was dead. And the Blue Jays found out about it afterwards, and they wanted Kenny Williams basically murdered in his sleep. And then karma hit because David Wells immediately blew out his back trying to bend over to field not one but two bunts. So as a fat guy in his 40s, I can appreciate what went on there. But that was my thought, was is that they looked at Madrigal and they said, we can find a second baseman, and we're worried about Nick Madrigal's future because of the severity of his leg injury this year. But I really just think that when you look at now that and the Cesar Hernandez trade and the fact that Hernandez could be here another year, it starts to make more sense why they didn't go straight up rental as a second baseman, because I, I wonder if Rick had in the back of his mind, I, I can live without Nick Madrigal on this team. Well, here's the thing, and there's a lot you can you can unpack there. First off, even if Mandrigal's 100%, I will tell you this, I've come around to the trade. I've come around to it, and I came around to it pretty quickly. Because after the initial gut punch, look, we have players we fall in love with as fans. We have people we really like. I know there's people who didn't like Nick Mandrigal. There are people that hated him being on the team. 
I mean, what the heck? James Fox, who comes on all the time from Future Sacks, who who comes on all the time, he does a great job on this show, has mentioned so many times that he's like, what are you going to do with Nick Madrigal? Wouldn't it be great if you could move Nick Madrigal and you could bring in like a guy who can hit from the left side of the plate and has more power? Like, he, he was ecstatic the moment he saw it. He's like, oh my God, thank God. Right. Like, there were fans who just celebrated immediately, like, thank you, because I've been telling you this, Madrigal's a flash in the pan. Like, there were people who just didn't think he was the future at second base. I thought that the White Sox could do worse than a Nick Madrigal for the next five to seven years on their team playing second base. Honestly, a guy who makes contact, has some speed, fine. But then as I as I sit back and I look at the deal, I really started to embrace it, and I'm actually very, very excited about it. And I'm excited because I, I look at Michael Kopech going to Craig Kimbrell, going to Liam Hendricks, and then I look at the fact that an Aaron Bummer is going to be sitting there before you even get to that. And the, the and then it's Tapura that you went and you picked up. Ryan Tapura that you picked up, yeah. Exactly. And you put those guys leading in. Your starter could go four and a third in a playoff game, and you could shut everybody down. You could literally just say, hey, guess what? It's the fifth inning, and you're not getting another run. Well, how about, how about the ability in a situation, in an extra inning game, if... If they go into a tie game, you have two closers that you can bring in. And if one happens to slip and you get to that, you know, against the Royals where, where you know, Liam gives up the uh, the dinger to Sal Perez, right? It happens. Perez owns Hendricks in his career. It's going to happen every once in a great while here. But wouldn't it have been a different story in that game if the Sox had pulled ahead in one run and then aren't sending out – Anybody other than, oh, I don't know, Craig Kimbrell <laughs> to go in and close that game. Right. You're going to have that option down the stretch. It's I, I, I love the fact that Rick Hahn is, is he's sacrificing some future, but isn't this what we wanted as fans? Isn't this what we've been waiting for? Go for it. I think that's why I'm accepting of it. I think that's why, and that's why I'm excited about it. I look at that back end and I say that, that back end of that bullpen and that entire bullpen now because moves were made and right now your bullpen – You have guys like Ruiz and Crochet who are sitting towards the back end of your bullpen that are now like the options that you use when you're not in a tight situation. Right. You have Reynaldo Lopez who's looked great through five five appearances, and if that continues, that's a nice guy as well. But then you get into the bummer and Tapera and Kopech and Kimbrell and Hendricks and good luck, and I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're the Dodgers, the Giants, the Yankees, the Astros, the Rays, whoever we're going to run into in this postseason, you are going to have a hell of a time scoring runs against this White Sox team. And Nick Madrigal was not going to contribute to this year's team. No. And what the White Sox really gave up here is they gave up, I would say, maybe maybe 15 points in an OPS plus from Hernandez to Madrigal at second base. And you could always replace Hernandez. You don't need to pick up his option. You could turn around and go into free agency and find any second baseman you want so the thing is, what the White Sox did is, yeah, it stings a little bit that Mandrigal's gone, but I've gotten more and more used to the idea of, that's fine, but replacing second base is very easy. Walking into the postseason with this kind of pitching staff, from the starters through the bullpen to the back end, nobody has what we have right now. This is a team now that I can say confidently can win the 2021 World Series. And some people may pick to be the favorite when we get to the end of September. Well, and look at the the grand total of what Rick Hahn did at the trade deadline. For basically Nick Madrigal and a few pitchers you could live without. I was done with Cody Hoyer. Yeah, a pitcher you can live without Cody Hoyer. Connor Pilkington was not, you know, and, I, and I, again, I, I in my analysis of it, I realized that Connor Pilkington... Having a good season at Double A Birmingham this year, not a guy that you're expecting to be a part of the major league rotation anytime soon. Bailey Horn may never be anything; he may be something. Who knows? But he's a perfect kind of guy to give up for a guy like Tapera. So you've got pitchers you don't need and may not ever need, and basically one guy that you care about, Nick Madrigal, and you come back with a massively upgraded bullpen. And, you know, I know people were down on Cesar Hernandez. Some people wanted Josh Harrison. You know, you kind of lament losing Adam Frazier. But honestly, Cesar Hernandez has been just a good, solid second baseman. He's a guy that you can kind of put in there and sort of forget about. He's just, his average is down because he's trying to hit more home runs this year. 
But honestly, I think if he walked in the door and Tony looked at him and said, you know what, go back to making contact and don't worry about hitting dingers, Hernandez would probably get back up to you know his usual 270 in a heartbeat. Let me tell you something right now. You got a guy in Liam Hendricks that was one of the leaders in all of Major League Baseball in whip, walks and hits per innings pitch. You know how much I love whip. Whip gives me tingly feelings. Like I, yeah. I absolutely <laughs> love that stat. If you don't put people on base, it's very hard for them to score. And when you when you added Tapura, and he of the and FIP is also my favorite one, fielding independent pitching, which takes out the defensive players. So it basically says this pitcher is this good, and his his FIP is actually lower than his ERA. Okay, he's got a 2.79 FIP and a 2.91 ERA, but his whip is a just a, a minuscule 0.785. He's basically Hendricks out there in terms of how many people he puts on base. And then you take Craig Kimbrell and his 0.709 whip. I mean, this is, and, and Kopex under one as well. I think he's in the 0.9s. Like, I mean, this is insane what the White Sox are going to march out there as long as they stay healthy. As long as this team is healthy when it hits the postseason, as long as Tony La Russa, and I've got to have faith with a guy that has multiple World Series rings, knows when to pull the trigger on which reliever and how to set up the matchups. This team, in my mind, they went from a team that I was telling people, I believe they can win the pennant, but I don't think they can win the World Series, to I think we could win the World Series this year. Like, I'm in. I get tingles as I say it, but I'm in with this move. It hurt to move on from Nick Madrigal. It really did. But you know what? If they didn't make this move, I think I would have looked around at what everybody else did and said we didn't do enough to keep up with the Joneses. And we're going to get into the postseason. We're going to have a hard time. Now I don't care. I don't care who got acquired by anybody. What hitter went to what team? Guess what? They got hit against these guys. Good luck. While you are enjoying this magical White Sox season, waiting to get to the postseason, but going to games, and I have a couple of them going to already here in August. I've got them mapped out. I can't wait to get out there to the ballpark and and enjoy this team. And hopefully we start getting more wins and losses because it's been a brutal week. But I think that's coming. Every team has has a downturn. Get on out to Cork and Carey at the park. You have heard about the problems. Standing in line inside of the ballpark to get a meal. It's difficult these days. They're having a hard time having vendors out there, enough of them, to feed you and give you drink. Why not get to the park early and go over to Cork and Carry at the park and feast upon their award-winning burgers and try all the craft beers that are up there on tap and the full bar that's behind there and the big open windows and the indoor-outdoor seating and the TVs all over the place and the ambiance and you're in the shadow of the ballpark. Why not pre-party and then also post-game over at Cork and Carry at the park. If you're not in the stadium, because trust me, it's going to get harder and harder to get tickets, why not go watch the game at home or away at Cork and Carry at the park? 33rd in Princeton. I'm telling you, this is going to be the spot to be. Get over there. Remember, you can book a party. You can actually rent the entire place out for a viewing party or for any party that you want to have. 33rd in Princeton. Give them a call, 312-842-0769, or visit them at corkandcarryatthepark.com. I wanted to... Look at the last few days because things have been so furious and so fast and kind of take every move of the trade deadline step by step. In fact, they're, not every move had to do with trades, but just everything that's happened over the last couple of days and get your thoughts on it so I can also share mine. And remember, if you have any thoughts listening to this podcast, go to SocksInTheBasement.com and on any device, You can just scroll a little bit. If it doesn't show up right away, bottom right-hand corner, there's a blue microphone. Click on it. Leave a voicemail. There is also a spot for you to send comments to us right there at SocksInTheBasement.com. It is very user-friendly. You can search up any topic we talked about. It will find you those podcasts, and it will show you all the options. We are everywhere that podcasts can be found and always at SocksInTheBasement.com. But let's, let's start with the... The first thing that happened as the show was coming out on Wednesday, and that's Luis Robert gets promoted to the Charlotte Knights. And I remember having him penciled in as a guy that was going to show up in September. And he's going to be here in a week, I guarantee He's going to be here, yeah. He's going to be back soon. (laughs) And that, I think, is why, you know, we didn't have to uh, sit here and sweat getting another outfield bat or worry about about that at all. I I thought you were actually going to start with – 
them signing Bill Seamus' son Cole to a minor league contract. No, no, but, I, I, I yeah, skip that. We start with Luis Robert. I skip that. We're going to go with Luis Robert as the first thing that happened, okay? And I'm going to skip yeah, the fact might, that they, signed, more important than Cole they signed a right-handed pitcher to a minor league contract, and we're going to get to the first move that happens on Thursday. Bailey Horn, left-handed pitcher, who I think MLB uh, Pipeline had as the 23rd best prospect in the White Sox system for right-handed relief pitcher Ryan Tapera, who uh, we were just talking about. And you you know I love him because I love whip. I love God. Now, and here's the problem. With him and Kimbrell, if you look at their year previously, they're not this good. You know, you're catching lightning in a bottle, but the guy is is done after this year. He's a he's a couple-month rental, and then you can decide what you want to do with him in the offseason because he becomes a free agent. So Tapera is the kind of guy you go out and you, you deal – a, a prospect that I'm not, I don't think we're going to miss. I, I, I talked to a lot of people. I watched a lot of, you know, stuff from guys that cover the minor league system and what scouts were saying. This, this guy seems like he's probably a bullpen piece anyway at the, when he finally gets up here. He had a lot of promise. The Sox had all the right things when they drafted him, but I don't think you're going to miss him. No, and that was really, that's MLB Pipeline's take on him too, was probably doesn't have the stuff to be a starter and he might be a nice bullpen piece at some point down the road. But the thing with Tapera to remember, too, is this is a guy that was really pretty good and a mainstay in the Blue Jays' bullpen for a number of years and then had some injury issues and is on his way back. So if you look at the 2020 version, just like if you look at 2020 Kimbrel, where he had that weird thing the year before like Dallas Keuchel did where he didn't get signed until the middle of the season, you can look at the longer history on both of those guys and realize that there is – history there that suggests that they are not just simply pitching out of you know their minds for the first time ever in their careers and Tapera he was pretty good back in the day as a Blue Jays setup guy so I I don't think this this good Ed Ed, he wasn't this good I mean here's a guy who was basically anywhere between like a 1.10 and a 1.25 whip who's out there right now putting on uh three quarters of a base runner every inning instead of putting on one and a quarter base runners. I mean, this is the best season he's ever had. He's out of his shoes. He would be a guy that would come out in the fifth or sixth or seventh inning, not a guy in the back end. But this is what bullpen guys are, though, is is they are guys who are pretty good at times, they struggle at times, and then you, if you can catch them in the season or two that they give you where they are really, really good, that's when you want them. I think about Cliff Polite, to to pull a name from the past, right? Cliff Polite was not great before he came to the Sox. He had that 2005 season, he was pretty unstoppable. And then after that, he went back to being, you know, decent, and then he fell off, right? So you caught Cliff Polite at the right time as a member of the 2005 Sox, and he became a key member of that bullpen. But good Lord, you know, walking into that season, you look at it and you go, eh, you know, maybe he's got something, and that's what Tapera is. He's, he's you know, what Cliff Polite was that year, and but a guy that has had some success, like like Polite had had. So it, it, he's not a f- complete flash in the pan, that's all. Socks in the Basement listeners looking for great craft beer on the south side? We have a spot for you. It's the Blue Island Beer Company. This unique local south side brewery with an incredible tap room is located in the historical district of Blue Island, Illinois. Live music indoors and outdoors, dollar off drafts on Tuesdays, $3 off growler fills every Wednesday. Incredible beers, great food options. Check out all they have to offer right now at blueislandbeercode.com. Have a beer and watch a game at Blue Island Beer Company, 13357 Old Western Avenue, for that great Blue Island beer. Blue Island beer, Blue Island beer. We are true to the craft, let me be absolutely clear. Blue Island beer, Blue Island beer. Let's all pour another round and drink Blue Island beer. So now the White Sox go out and they get a second baseman. And I wasn't too uh, terribly excited originally with Cesar Hernandez because I, I kind of thought to myself, well, Josh Harrison would be a little bit better. Um, I was I was kind of hoping for maybe a Trevor Story. I was, I was interested in Eduardo Escobar. We've been talking about him for a while. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you get Cesar Hernandez. His OPS plus has him as pretty much an, an average hitter. He sits right around 100, which means he's a league average in terms of his OPS. Whatever's going on in Major League Baseball, he does pretty much that. He's got some pop in his bat, and he's a switch-hitting second baseman. you got an option for him next year. 
What you give up in Connor Pilkington is not that big of a deal. The interesting thing about him, and I, I want to know what your thoughts are on this, he's definitely what you needed. He's an upgrade over Garcia and Mendick. He's definitely, you needed something like that if you were going to make a push here. You needed a second baseman. You didn't give up very much. Next year now, especially with Mandrigal gone, you could pick up the option or you can go to free agency and let him go depending on what you like out there or what you're hearing you might be able to get. He gives you an awful lot of options with what you're going to do next year. But right now, I think he's the perfect guy being a starting second baseman on another team coming over here now for the push for the last couple of months. I think what you're going to get, at least you know you're getting league average to slightly above at that position. Well, there's a couple of things that that occurred to me about Hernandez versus Josh Harrison versus Eddie Escobar and versus Trevor Story, and that is that Cesar Hernandez is a second baseman. Harrison's been playing third almost exclusively for the Nationals this year. Uh, Escobar has not played a whole lot of second base in his career. He's been a third baseman and a shortstop. And it's he hasn't played second really since he was kind of with the Sox or, or you know maybe right after they traded him to the Twins. So Hernandez defensively is probably better than all those guys. And Trevor Story would be moving either moving Tim Anderson out of position or he would be playing out of position as well. You know, in terms of production, Trevor Story is one of those guys that right now he's a splashy name. But if you look at his stats, he's not not the Trevor Story that you think he is, and especially away from Coors Field. And Harrison, I think, was the one guy that I looked at from a hitting standpoint that was like, you know, the way he's hitting this year and the way he's hitting the past, I like his bat maybe better than Hernandez. But Cesar Hernandez is just sort of a safe league average to slightly above, like you said, second baseman. In this lineup and with the ability to potentially either keep him on or go after something splashy and say, you know, maybe look at at if you're going to move guys around, maybe look at and see if Corey Seager isn't re-signed by the Dodgers next year because they just picked up Trey Turner, that, you know, maybe you spend some money on him and say, hey, Corey, do you feel like coming here being some left-handed thunder for us and playing second base instead of shortstop? And you have options going into next season with that idea that, you know, we talked about earlier about Madrigal maybe maybe being in the back of Rick Hahn's mind as somebody that he was looking at being able to move. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, there was a point where they were talking about You know, getting story that was out there. There's been stuff that's been said on MLB Network that the Rockies wanted Madrigal as part of the package. That probably gets in the Rick Hahn's mind. And then he goes, okay, well, but these talks are stalling, but other people might be interested in a Nick Madrigal. You know, every once in a while you get some of these Twitter accounts, like Rick Hahn's brought it up before, these crazy Twitter accounts that that are ahead of things on trades. And there's a couple of them that I follow because every once in a while, they're right. In fact, they're right more than they're wrong. Yeah, they are. And a couple of them put out there that the White Sox, and this will never be confirmed by both teams, but that the White Sox, their offer at the end of the Cubs was Hoyer and either Madrigal or Crochet. Now, I would take Madrigal in that 100 times out of 100 if I'm the Cubs. And they they traded Javi Baez, I think, like 15 seconds after they made that deal. When he went and got Hernandez, he then knew in the back of his mind, if the right deal came along, I can part with Nick Madrigal. I think that's when he made the decision, when he got Hernandez. He probably went to bed that night thinking to himself, you know, Madrigal's name came up here and came up here and came up here. And in his comments after the trade deadline, he said he and Kenny Williams both agreed if there was one guy they wanted to get before the deadline, they both wanted Craig Kimbrell. So that could have been a name that popped up. Jed Hoyer was on Chicago radio. My dad reminded me of this. He called me up after the trade. He goes, remember when I was talking to you about that? And I said, yeah, I heard that interview too. And he and he, he goes, you know, Jed Hoyer was on, you know, talking about the Cubs and talking about what he likes in baseball. And he liked high contact hitters that get their bat on the ball and get base hits. And he didn't like the fact that everything was three true outcome. And he was like, that's something that teams are going to be moving to. And he was basically describing Nick Madrigal. So I'm sure that when they first inquired about Kimbrell, that was a name that came up. And Han, over the last couple of days, had to say, well, what happens if I move him? And when he finds out that the guy from Cleveland's available, you know, I mean, it's not linear. You know, none of this stuff is linear. You don't know how these conversations are going. He's like hanging up one phone and make picking up another phone. And then he's like, all right, let me get back to you, see if I can swing that deal. And then he picks up another phone like, is this guy available? So when you look at the whole body of work here, what the White Sox did is they took a guy who was on the 60-day IL that was not going to contribute this year. 
that I still think has far greater upside than the guy that's going to be at second base this year and likely next year if they pick up his option in Hernandez. But they moved that guy to go make their bullpen an absolute force to go try and win a World Series this year. And if they don't win a World Series this year, it's not like you mortgaged your entire future by trading Mandrigal. You may have given up a little bit, but it's not something you can sit back and criticize in later years like, well, if we would have never gotten rid of Mandrigal, we would have won three World Series. I don't believe that. I don't think you believe that. So in the end, it's a pretty smart way of how he moved his guys around and came up with two guys in the bullpen. He got probably two of the best. He definitely got the best available in Kimbrel. And then he got he got another one of the best in Tepera. And then he goes out and he gets himself a gold glove second baseman who's going to be a real second baseman, which we have lacked since Mandrigal got injured. So I, it's really hard to be angry about it. And you know who else I can't be angry at? Because I've been angry with him for the last several years is Jerry Reinsdorf because the salary that they took on this is the first time that I can actually say the money's being spent. This is the first time they've broken the payroll that they had before they went into the rebuild. This is the first time they've gone over it by picking up this extra salary. And so there was this is such a positive thing. This is like something I didn't expect as a White Sox fan. You took on salary, you made a bold, bold move in going after Kimbrel. You made some smart moves making trades, and Rick Hahn wasn't afraid to make a deal when I thought he was shell shocked in terms of being afraid to give up any kind of his prospects. He made deals, he did what he needed to do. As I said on the last show, he's likely the executive of the year. The, the way that he's constructed his team and then what he did at the trade deadline. Bravo. Well, yeah, and, and if you want to tie a bow on it, think about it this way. We don't care about the other guys that were given up at the trade deadline. So Rick Hahn turned Nick Madrigal into Ryan Tapera, Cesar Hernandez, and Craig Kimbrell in one trade deadline. That is amazing for a guy who's on the 60-day IL where his hamstring was torn off of his butt. Right, because I didn't care about I didn't care about Hoyer, and I didn't care about Pilkington, and I didn't care about Horn, and I didn't care about Tyler Johnson who got released to make room on the forty man roster. That doesn't affect me either. He's been released twice already. They brought him back because nobody else wanted him. Right. If you look at the money guys, if you look at the guys that are true major league baseball players that were traded in this deal, in these deals, the White Sox gave up one true major league baseball player, in Nick Madrigal, and got back three real Major League Baseball players in Hernandez, Tapera, and Kimbrell. And so if you saw that all on paper sitting in front of you like I do now when you bring up the transaction page and you kind of go through the last couple of days just so I can keep it all straight, it's it's astounding what the White Sox were able to go and do. It was, it was an excellent job. The only thing that's going to hurt you is watching Nick Madrigal. And trust me, in the Crosstown series, he's going to walk off on us a couple times, and it's going to sting. And you know what? The Cubs broadcasters are going to yell just like Jason Benetti. Thanks, Sox, as he's run around the bases. But if I win the World Series, I don't care. Because guess what? When we got a Loy, they didn't do anything. This is this deal benefits us far more than the deal to get Quintana, in my mind. Um, I, I, I found it interesting that I penciled in immediately when all these moves were made because you had to make room on the 40-man. So you moved Evan Marshall to the 60-day injured list. You'll probably never see him again this season. Nope. And you, you released Tyler Johnson, who are going to try to re-sign. You still had to make room for two of your acquisitions to make it on to the 26 man. And I immediately penciled in when uh, the first day of these, this two day whirlwind at the end of the trade deadline, when Hernandez and Tapera were, were picked up, I, I immediately penciled Burr and Mendick off the team. And that's exactly what happened Burr and Mendick off the team the moment that those guys join the team and K- Craig Kimbrell joins the team. And it's such a formidable lineup right now. And, and I think right now, as a White Sox fan now, all you're watching is, when does Robert get back? Please, Aloy, I hope you didn't hurt your groin too much, because that's making me worried. And let's just stay healthy for crying out loud. And the Cleveland Indians gave up. It's over. Oh, yeah. All you got to do is just go 500 and just get yourself ready and make sure your pitchers don't get worn out. And let Jimmy Lambert get some, some spot starts. Bring up a guy every once in a while to rest one of your pitchers. I don't want Rodon getting a dead arm. And, and I, I just want you to work through all this and plan for October. Because come October, this place is going to be insane. This is going to be so much fun. We've been waiting for this for years. And after this trade deadline, oh my God, this team can win the World Series. Socks in the basement. Socks in the basement. 
Socks in the Basement. Socks in the Basement. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found. And always on SocksInTheBasement.com.